Good day fellow investors, investing in index funds for 2022. I recently did this video discussing how the Fed helped all investors over the last 40 years and I showed this chart when over 60 years from 1929 an exuberant period like we are now adjusted for inflation for 60 years stocks didn't do much or practically nothing but dividends given the dividends are very low now not higher as they were in the past you don't expect much there and then i got a great comment from young tom cruise here peter carlson so what is now for us to do for investors buy or sell index funds or do something else and in this video i really want to discuss that what's the best strategy for index funds no matter what and then related to index funds i got this comment about full-time workers working 14 hours a day can they be good investors with that job not really much time because that's always the discussion index funds okay investing time effort compared to the returns and i really want to also discuss that in this video so let's immediately start with the expected returns from the s&p 500 which is usually the index fund used for discussing investing and expected returns now if you look at the s&p 500 price earnings ratio the price earnings ratio is 25.53 if you calculate that then that's four percent earnings yield if there is earnings growth of two percent the long-term returns should be around six percent coming from the businesses you own through the S&P 500 which is not bad however of course there are big periods of time where you don't get great returns so really really bad returns and we might be looking at something like that also ahead but there is one component of this that is something you don't have to be afraid if you invest over the long term so this flat line no returns it doesn't mean you have to have those returns of course there is risk of low returns ahead because a price earnings ratio of 25 gives a four percent earnings yield and if the price earnings halves goes to 12.5 which is close to the averages over history then your long-term returns will not be six but around three percent which is a big difference for investing of course there can be crashes so that's normal for investing you have to expect crashes ahead you don't know from which level you don't know when but that's something you need to take as granted when it comes to investing and be ready for it by using the best index fund investing strategy and the best index fund investing strategy is one where as buffett says you invest through thick and thin and especially thin so you have a long-term investing strategy you constantly add something automatically to the index and over the long term you'll do well the problem is that this is hard for most people because if you look at jp morgan's average investor returns over the last 20 years it was 2.9 percent if we look at the s&p 500 it was 7.5 percent so the average investor is either stupid or doesn't do what they have to do because they try to beat the market rebalance do the wrong thing at the wrong moment in time and then you get this the key is the following that let's say that the market now crashes i don't know 50 percent or even more over the next 10 years and that it really looks ugly for stocks but if you have a long-term horizon if you invest a thousand dollars here of course your returns will be just the dividends over 30 years but if you keep investing a thousand dollars or something every month your returns will be 4x here and when you sum up the dividends from here over 25 years where the dividends will likely grow from the businesses the dividends from here and the 4x from here you will have a very very good return because you will be increasing your capital over time and that's the core it doesn't really matter what happens here the key that matters is that you invest here 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 
So over 30 years, you likely do well. So long-term returns on total capital invested, when you take the average and compound your wealth over time, even if you set it and forget it on automatic on an index fund, will likely be from worst case scenario 5% to best case 10, 12%. Especially if you have the guts to invest more when things look ugly and perhaps do other things when things look exuberant, which is something that we'll discuss at the end of this video. So it's about also your life, but the key is to invest through thick and thin. And the problem is that life gets there life messes up things and that's why people do the wrong thing at the wrong moment in time. And now many index fund investors and all other investors always wonder, should I invest in index funds or should I invest in individual stocks? Is there a difference? Well, let me first say that if you are thinking of investing in stocks, then you're already on the wrong path. It's not an index fund that goes up and down. It's 500 of the best American businesses, if you take the S&P 500. It's not a stock, it's owning a business if you invest in an individual business. That's the key to understand. When you start forgetting about stocks and start thinking about businesses, then everything becomes much easier. If a price of a stock business or index businesses goes lower, you are happier because you can buy more for cheaper and compound your wealth faster over time. Of course, the biggest effort, even with a passing investing strategy, is your stomach because you need to buy more when everyone is fleeing from the stock market and that's what will make you rich. Index fund or stock investing directly. And the key factor I think here that many overlook is to implement this into a life perspective. So you are now here, you want to compound your wealth for a long-term goal, 20, 30 years, and then, okay, then you can see the benefits of invest. Most people are focused on the short term and therefore they miss both the index fund investing long-term, the strategies, stick to it for 30 years, and you will get to your goal without effort, without thinking. That's simple, but the simplest thing is usually the hardest thing to do. And you need to have a long-term perspective and really think about, okay, am I going to invest through crisis, recessions, losing my job, uh, health issues, etc., etc. It will usually come all at the worst, and that's life. Life is ups and downs, and the key is that you invest especially in the downs, life and stock market downs. And also, you can then compare investment and life alternatives and see what is the return on owning a home, should I pay off my mortgage, and if you start thinking, okay, what's the risk and reward that I can get from investing here, here, and here, over time, you make a strong portfolio, you make a balance sheet fortress of your finances, and then whatever happens, you do well, because you are ready. Too many people gamble too much, are not ready for financial crisis, for this, having money set aside or something. When you start thinking, okay, this can go wrong, this can go wrong, and that's the first thing. If you get wiped out, no matter what portfolio you have, it doesn't help you. So to answer the question, index funds or other, your strategy is the answer. So what you want and your goal and your input effort is the key answer. Of course, if we are investing, let's say we have zero, we invest monthly $500, we do that over 30 years, estimated interest rate, let's say 8% for an index fund, let's say that we can go to 13% with the addition on top of the 8%, and let's see what are the results. So. Of course, if you do 13%, you get much more money, almost triple the money that at 8% if you compound at a higher rate. But this 8%, you have to see, okay, is the difference, this difference worth my time, my, my nerves, my effort, my looking at businesses, my analyzing stocks, my owning businesses, and the stress of owning a bad business when it goes down. So index funds is much more diversified. Of course, I prefer always investing in stocks, always look at the incentive and the bias of the person it's telling you a story. I'm a, I have a stock market research platform, so I am 
all personally for investing in stocks, but I think that, as Buffett says, 98% of the population should simply put it in index funds, forget about it, and that's it. The 2% of the population who wants more, who wants to invest knowledge and learning and time into knowing about your finances, that's the key. When you start knowing about the finances, you start smelling the opportunities and especially the risks to avoid. And when you are there, then it's normal to own a business rather than an index fund. And over time, nobody can promise you you will do better. But maybe you will lower your risks and get to the same return, which is again a great thing to do. But you have to understand yourself and no matter whether you're an index fund investor or stock investor, you are your worst enemy. I am my worst investing enemy. That's how it is. That's simply how it is. So it's first about you, what best fits you, and then whether you can stick to it for the long term. So also on the effort, should you invest or not, just see what, where are you now, how you can get to your goals, and what's the best vehicle so that you can surely get to those goals over time. The risks are there, the rewards are there, and you have to navigate them in line with your best investment decisions, index funds or stocks. Thanks for watching. Of course, if you want to check my research platform, here is the video. The link is in the description below. I do the stock analysis. I cover the stocks there. And you might want to see whether it fits you from an investing perspective or not. Once you make the decision what fits you, everything is much easier.